Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous Father's Day gift for our fathers for 2022. Now it is a gender friendly scarf as well guys. You can actually make this for the lovely lady in your life and there you go guys it's simply divine and the stitch is called the Royal Ridge stitch now we have done something similar in this kind of stitch in the round here on the channel it kind of looked like that it's more in the back loops and there there it is there's a picture right there how gorgeous is that i've left a link of that scarf there or cowl if you will in the description box down below and you can click on that link and make that one there if you like but in the meantime we're going to make this gorgeous scarf today called the royal ridge stitch you're going to love it all right what will you need for your scarf you will need depending on your size now this size here was the smallest size and I talk about that in the tutorial anyways but the smallest size that I made was for a five foot to a five foot five fella okay and I used mm, let's see one and three quarters and almost two skeins of this 10 ply Aran weight or a number four weight overseas yarn okay it's 300 meters per skein I'm not sure of the yards I'll just pop the yards there right now beautiful um, and I use probably between um, 500 to 550 we'll say roughly 550 meters worth for the small size okay almost two skeins of this now the measurements are within the tutorial so you can have a look at those anyways but if you really wanted to know what the measurements are this one here is made for a five foot to five foot five your next measurement up will be from five foot six to five foot nine and the next measurement will be from six foot and over now that's just um, depending on your fella as well the rule of thumb is to measure your yourself from your feet right to the top of your head and that is the length of your scarf all right so when you're chaining yours across this way just pop that right next to the length of the fella you wish to make it for or you can actually measure your fella and then measure the length whichever suits you but from the bottom of their foot right to the top of their head that is the amount of stitches chain stitches you should go across i do give you a chain amount just to help you out but you are welcome to use any chain amount you like so you will have a chain of mount for the three sizes all right the hook that you will need today now it does call for i believe a five does it yes it does call for a bit closer there you go it calls for a five millimeter hook it is a hundred percent pure wool and the washing instructions when i take this out if you can get to it are da -da -da -da, right there all right so it's warm machine wash or gentle um short gentle wash personally i wash everything by hand but you know what it's up to you warm rinse uh well on gentle cycle normal spin do not tumble dry dry flat in shade warm iron dry cleanable um 30 percent okay um 30 percent let's try <laughs> hello let's try 30 i don't know where i got percent from let's try 30 degrees uh do not bleach all right because that'll stain your uh you'll get white marks on your yarn all right so that's that um, that's your hook you will need a pair of scissors you will you will need this gorgeous mm -hmm, you will need it sewing needle now if you've got a 200 gram skein yarn like I have you'll only need to cut your yarn once I won't say cut but to join your yarn once if you're making the small if you're making the medium and the large you'll need to join it twice so you'll have extra ends than I do all right um, I didn't actually show you the ends that I um, changed halfway through but it was around here it was more about around here somewhere and then I did uh, an extra half or quarter of the skein or three quarters of the skein not a quarter hello um, so I probably used about roughly just under two skeins worth for the small size 
All right. Also, That's guys, it, right? if you didn't know this and you're new to our channel, oh, firstly, welcome, by the way. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, we actually showed this scarf on our live on Wednesday. So our regulars would know this scarf was coming. If you want to know all the tutorials that are coming up on the channel and when they are coming up, at what time, at what day and so on, Join us on our lives. We do have a lot of fun. Now, they are 10 a.m. Saturday mornings and 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoons, Melbourne, Australia time. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> Sometimes we have too much fun. We get a bit naughty. But that's what lives are about. They're just to relax and enjoy um, your crochet and your craft. That's it, guys. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want you to get started creating your gorgeous uh, Royal Ridge scarf for Father's Day. Thank you for joining us and good luck all. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off by making a slip knot, grabbing the tail end of your yarn, wrap it around your finger once and twice, holding it there, holding it down there, yeah, grab your back loop, pass it halfway over your finger, hold it there, grab the other loop, passing it all the way over your finger, pop your hook in and give your tail a tug. Now I left a nice long tail for weaving in ends entirely up to you it doesn't matter we're going to start off by making chains and a chain is yarn all righty guys i noticed that was a little bit difficult to see so we're going to try it in a brighter color so yarn over your hook pull your hook through the loop on your hook once yarn over twice keeping these stitches loose yarn over three times yarn over four and five not too loose because you don't want that to happen yeah six seven eight nine ten going. um yeah. what i want you to do is chain on the amount of numbers for your size now here are the sizes right here so it's entirely up to you which size you want just focus on the heights that you see there they're the ones that will tell you exactly how many stitches it would be remember we are using a 10 ply yarn or an aran weight yarn um, so if you are using another ply, you have to change it to suit your measurements, all right? However, this is a stitch count that you don't need count, okay? Well, you do. You want it to be straight all the way through your scarf, of course. But there's no exact count. You can chain on one extra, two extra, four less, four more, whatever you want, five, six, seven more, it doesn't matter. Initially, the rule of thumb is the size of the person from your head to your toe would be enough for your scarf all right that's just what the initial sizing is but for me these are the sizes that i did with my yarn and my hook uh, the size five millimeter hook and your aran weight or 10 ply yarn all right so go ahead and chain on your amounts but before you do i'm just going to do one more stitch so i want to show you something so it's easier for you to count so i'm going to do one more stitch which makes that 11 Pop your stitch marker in your 10th chain, which was here, all right, because that's your 11th. So pop your hook, I'm sorry, your stitch marker in your 10th chain. Then do another 10. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if you want to do your 11 like I do, so it's easy for you to put stitch marker in, you can. Otherwise, just pop your stitch marker in that 10th stitch. And then keep going one, two, three, etc. Now, if you don't have stitch markers, guys, by all means, use a piece of thread, use a, a safety pin, use a paper clip, whatever you have in stock. When you pop your stitch marker on every tenth, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. It's easier for you to count that way. But there's nothing worse than you getting right up to 112 and then someone walks past you and says it's 115 in stock and you won't, and you start saying 116, 117. So you've got extra count or less, all right? It happens. So I would actually pop stitch markers on every tenth. If it's if it's easy for you, I pop it on every tenth, and then when I get to 50, I take all the other stitch markers out and I know there's 50 stitches there. You don't need to do that. That's just something that I do. But otherwise, pop it in every tenth. And when you get to the end of your stitches, meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. There's a stitch count again. Follow your stitch count for your size and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty, guys, I've got my gazillion and one five million chains. <laughs> And we are 
Don't you love it? And we are about to start our pattern. Now, we're not about to start the pattern. We're doing foundation rows first, okay? So your first row, and I've allowed for this already, is to pop single crochets all the way across. And a single crochet is, and let's get a nice close up. You grab your hook, and all you are doing is popping your hook in that very first loop that you come to. All right. Now, this is entirely up to you. You can pop it in that loop. You can pop it through two loops or you can do what I do is turn it over and find a back bump. Oops, once again, you're not able to see what I was doing. So I've moved back to the red. OK, now the way the stitches are, OK, the way you look at your stitches are this way. All right. So when you are. Uh, starting your single crochets you're popping them in those top loops there right but we are going to be popping them in those bubbled edges there and again it's hard to see but once I get a close-up you'll have a better look at it and you'll know what I mean all right if you are new to crochet and this is tricky just do your single crochet in the very top loop you come to all right so just pop your hook in that stitch and do a single crochet which I'll do in a minute but for the rest of us turn your work to the side see that little bump right there you're gonna pop your hook in that little bump it's called the back bump if you will yeah pop your hook in pull a loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops grab your stitch marker and just pop it in there like so yeah and then, once you do one, your work is facing you naturally. So the bumps are actually facing you. All you have to do is find your very next bump there. All right, put your hook in, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And again, in your bump. Now, no matter what you do, however you start, continue in that manner. Don't turn your work and start doing it in the front loops now just if you decide to do the front loops keep them in the front loops if you decide to do them in that little back bump there then keep going that way and this is why i asked you to keep your chains a little loose earlier so that you can pop your hook in there all right again if this is too much trouble take it undone just up to here and pop it through the side loops all right so it is going to take you a little while and it's going to take me a little while not on this piece here but on our very next, uh, our green piece, these are the stitches that are normal. And then when you turn them over, you actually see the little bump right there. All right, I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do these 2.5 million stitches. Head off on your own. Pop your single crochets in your chains all the way across. Get to your very last mm, chain right there. And I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, what you should have is a row of single crochets. Now I'm going to do it in the red because I tried recording before in the green and it still didn't look right. Okay, so there's our red. Now if you uh, played your cards right and you ended up at the end of the row, you would end up with your little bump sticking up at the end of the row. You just pop your hook in there like so, without splitting the yarn. Now this is a yarn I use just to play with, that's why it's all split. Not because there's something wrong with the yarn. I just play with it a lot. <laughs> and there's your last single crochet. Now what you're going to do is chain one and turn your work because you are going to work along these stitches here. The next row is a half double crochet stitch across every stitch. And that is popping the yarn over your hook. So I like just yarn over your hook. And you're avoiding this chain that you did, but you're hopping into the same stitch right there that you are already in and doing your half double. So pop your hook in that stitch and that's having your two loops on top. Yep. Pull a loop through and you should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now, just to let you know, if you've ended up with one single crochet more or one less because you messed up a count, don't worry about it. It's not necessary. There's no particular count. It just means your stitch, will, your scarf will be that little tiny bit bigger or little tiny bit smaller and no one will know the difference, yeah? So yarn over your hook. We're going to be putting a half double in every stitch 
all the way across so straight into the stitch like that you should see two loops on top pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and then you do it again all the way across your row very very simple all right this is i love doing half double crochets they're quick and easy they're not as tall as a double crochet and will have a lot of gaps um, and they're not as small or as short as the single crochet so there you go and don't worry about if there's a knot in my yarn here because this is just a playing yarn i'm not going to be using it for anything okay now you'll probably take forever to get to the end of your row so get to the end of your row and i will meet you back here once you're done and just get to the stitch just before your stitch mark and i'll meet you back there in a moment Alrighty, guys here we are at the end of this row now i've given up on showing you how to do it in the green because the green just doesn't come up right <laughs> so yarn over our hook now you should have your stitch marker stitch there just pop your very last half double crochet in your stitch marker finish off your half double crochet take out your stitch marker i meant in your stitch marker stitch by the way not your stitch marker <laughs> take out your stitch marker and what you should have is that yeah all right from here you are going to chain one turn your work like we did before and once again you're going to avoid that chain and just put a half double in that first stitch however this row here is going to be the pattern repeat so yarn over your hook it's not exactly a half double it is a half double but before we do it let me show you when we are doing our half doubles we're going in normally we're going in those that little space there where you've got two loops on top and the rest of your stitch down the bottom or your post I should say down the bottom and we're going into those two loops so you've got your one two and three loops all right so what we're going to do is not put our half double in our normal stitch like so we're going to put it in the very front loop right there so you've got one and then two and three loops there so it's one two and three okay and we are popping our half double through that loop right there and you'll see it better in the next stitch anyway so let's pop our half double in the loop in front it's these loops that you see right here all right so do your half double like so and pop a stitch marker in there like so okay yarn over your hook and you can see that you see the top loop there you're going into the loop under that top loop so it's right there so when you are there if you turn it to the side you should have one and two loops there and then you should have that third loop here so do your half double like so and again you're doing that in the side loop or should i say front loop of every half double stitch across your row and i love this stitch it is just one of those things i love it so much it gives it a very nice ridged effect which is almost like when you look at it on the side of the scarf it's like looking at a scarf that is made with front posts and back posts but this is so much easier than a front post and a back post it's in the loop only but when you get to the end of the row and what i'll do is i'll let you head off on your own and get to the end of the row right when you get to the end of the row the last stitch is relatively tricky so get to the end of the row and we'll talk about what you're going to do next all righty guys here i'm at the end of the row now that is our stitch with a stitch mark in so that is one stitch this is still your second last stitch pop it in that loop like so so when you get to the stitch with your stitch marker your stitch marker has been placed in the normal stitch where we would normally put our hook in so we would normally put our hook in there but we're not going to do that we're going to pop it in the front of that stitch right there in front of your uh, stitch marker so to speak all right so it's in front of the stitch marker do your half double crochet take out your stitch marker and there you go now it does look like it's pulling a little bit don't stress once 
we start doing a few rows, that will go away. Chain one, turn your work. All right, and there you have that little ridge right there. How gorgeous does that look? Simply divine. All right, so once again, we're going to repeat this row that we just did. And now we can actually see our prominent line on the bottom of our work. See, normally we would do a half double in two loops like that. And you would see a two loops on top. And then front loop if you wanted to work in your front loop. And then back loop if you wanted to work in your back. But we are working on that side loop right there. So if you're not sure, just bring it backwards. And the very bottom loop you see, that is the one you're working in. And you're doing your normal half double like that. All right, pop your stitch marker in there. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that. Then you need to hop right into the very next stitch. Now being weary not to skip the stitch, yeah? So you're in that stitch. Your very next one is there. You can see it sticking out. It's quite prominent. All right, there. And again into your next super easy, yeah? and your next and so on and of course because there's no count you don't have to fuss too much however I would still use stitch markers and make sure your count is the same in every row because if you're anything like me and you watch TV while you're doing this you can accidentally miss a stitch and now just quickly let me show you that's the ridge side this side turn it over and what do you know, there's a ridge on that side as well. So it's going to be divine when it's done, all right? And you've seen the picture anyway, so you know what the ridges will look like. Oh, actually, you saw it in the promo, so there you go. All right, so what I want you to do now, very, very simply, is to just keep going until you get to the width that you would like. Now, this, this part here, a lot of people get confused on. OK, now I'll just tell you quickly, you can actually make a really thin width and have your scarf wrap around twice or you can make the nice solid uh, width, which I'm going to make and have the scarf be wrapped around once like you see in that picture right there. All right. So that is only wrapped around the neck once, giving it a nice solid look. Um, and it is a solid look. It's a 10 ply Aran weight yarn. All right. So my measurements ended up to be 17 centimeters in length or roughly around six or seven inches. All right. It's, it was kind of in between six and seven inches is what the scarf that I came up with. Now that is relatively thick. OK, if you wanted yours a little bit thinner, just don't do as many rows. All you need to do is grab your measuring tape like so. And that's already, let's get a close up, we can see it anyway, that's already three centimetres. Now think about 17 centimetres. That is how wide it would be. So it's relatively thick. You can also do it right down to 12 centimetres or even eight and have it wrap around the neck twice. But I would rather go a little bit thicker because it's a little bit more warmer for the winter months. All right, so that's up to you when it comes to width. But if you wanted to do the same as me, just make as many rows until you reach 17 centimetres. And I'll meet you back here once you're done. Oh, hang on. We'll get to the end of the row. I do apologise. Let's get to the end of the row so I can show you what to do. Oh, OK, OK, OK. I think you know anyway because we did it before. So keep going right all the way across your row, like so. All right, there's our second last stitch. Don't lose that second last stitch. You must get it, yeah? Or you'll be one stitch short. And again, it doesn't matter, but then your work will start to, you know, bend in and everything. It'll get all crooked and you don't want that, yeah? But again, the bonus about this stitch is there's no exact count. So you can do your stitch any way you like. So there's your stitch marker again in those two loops, yeah? You want to pop your hook in that loop in front of your stitch marker like so okay take out your stitch marker yes yep chain one flip your work and off you go ridges on both sides very very exciting all right so let's start with the first one remember we're not going in the two loops like that are we we are going in the very first side loop or front loop or whatever you want to call it it's actually not called the front loop i think it's called a side loop 
But anyway, pop your stitch marker in there. So head off on your own. Meet me back here and we'll start talking about measurement. And you can decide then whether your size is uh, appropriate for you. Head off on your own, do the rows that you need to do and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Ta-da! That's the whole scarf. It's pretty long, pretty long. All right, now let me tell you what my measures and when I can get the measuring tape. All righty, here we go. All right, so mine is, again, this is a rough measurement and it measures, oh, let me go a bit further in because it's a bit wide down the bottom for now. There you go. It's roughly around 17 or 18 inches. Now, I'm sorry, let's try centimetres. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is between six and seven inches. Don't look at the top line. That's not inches, by the way. It's just a, a really bad measuring tape. My white one's gone missing. Um, but there you go. So it's roughly around, it says 18, but after a few days, that's going to close up a little bit and become 17, believe it or not. Look, it's already, just by squashing it in gently, it's already dropped a centimetre, yeah? So it will close up a little bit. That's the stitch. That is the actual stitch that does that to you and gives it that more of an, an astringent effect, if you if you will. Look how nice and squashed up. I love this look. I love it so much. Whoops, <laughs> a little bit of thread there. Get rid of that. Hello. I don't even know where that came from. Alrighty, guys, I just forgot to mention also, make sure that this last row and or last two rows are perfect because we are now going to cast off and weave in our ends, yeah? So I have one more. I don't know, where is it? Oh, there it is. One more to go there. Oh, I'm not even in frame there. Sorry, guys. And I have my very last stitch, which is there. I'll take out that stitch marker like so which is there all right so you now have your row finished yeah chain one and pull that loop through you can make your tail as long as you like it doesn't matter give it a cut yeah and just literally pull it in because you want that knot to be nice and tight non-visible then you need to grab this little sewing darning weaving needle this is the part yours truly dislikes <laughs> i really do dislike doing it but you know what guys i dislike it but i'm always always fussy with weaving in ends now you can weave your end in any any way you like i do find it's a lot better to go the way the tail is facing right and not just to go into um a stitch but maybe very very gently well actually no true you can go under the next stitch that you were just in on one loop only yeah like so that way it looks like it's part of the stitch then it's up to you what i like to do because there's a whole lot of ridges here i like to literally go through loops and I don't do this with most of my work, right? But I do it with some of these scarves because they are going to be noticeable if you have them just weaved in up the top, yeah? So I literally just go through some of these loops at the back. And then I find my way down to this ridged area. It, it could have been ridged here, but it's not. The ridges are further down this way. All right, so just go down wherever you want to go. So you just going through some stitches. Just make sure that you're not, your needle is not visible, okay? All right, and then once you get into this little ridged area, like so, you can work in and out of the ridge, if that makes any sense. Oops, <laughs> she had one job, just to go in and out of the ridge. And there you go. So just, uh, again, this is not what I would normally do. I think I was out of frame there, sorry guys. But I'm doing it for this particular pattern because there's no real border on this pattern. Now, if you wanted to border it, you can. I find the border does pull at the uh, base of the scarf, so I don't border it. So if you look carefully, you can't see the, the thread from here. And you can't see thread from there. Once you've come this way, you want to go back in another direction. And I would just slip under there like that. 
and I'm going through the actual ridge all right if that makes any sense going through the ridge I'm not pulling it tight or it's going to tug and I'm not leaving it too loose oh that's a little bit loose there all right I'm hoping that you can see this being the uh, green well, it's a little bit difficult to see isn't it now if you know another way of weaving in your ends by all means you can do that when you get here this a whole lot of thickness here I'm going to go right through all that thickness like that just check the front I find I've got a little bit of a gap in the front here I'm going to try and fill up some of this gap I don't know why I ended up with a bit of gap but I did you don't have to that's just closing it up a little bit just tightening it up a little bit and then guess what you're going to go back the other direction you can actually now pop your needle through oops I'm not even in frame pop your needle through the actual ridge all right like that this is the final row or the final thread can't see the needle from the front we're going right through the ridge pull that through there don't pull too tight you don't want to have it tugging just give it a cut that's quite a few rows in right I've done it three times and give it a tug that is not going to come out in the wash all right so now you have that tail right there you're going to do exactly the same see if you can weave that tail there back in through here going in and out of the ridge and if you wanted to go up and down this way by all means you can do that too there is no right or wrong way of weaving in your ends so there you go guys thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget to join us on our lives at 4 p.m wednesday afternoons and 10 a.m saturday morning melbourne australia time just hide that end there um, and don't forget to weave in that last end this is a beautiful little scarf that we have created today specifically for fathers in our life but guess what guys like i mentioned earlier in the promo this is a gender friendly scarf you can use this scarf on the lady in your life as well all right thank you so much for watching i'd like to wish all the fathers out there a happy father's day and don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys well pretty much already do for me and all i want to say right now is oh happy father's day <laughs> ciao for now